Okay guys, so today we're gonna do a Q&A video. We haven't done one in forever. So we're here in Koreatown at a cafe and we're gonna answer all of your questions. So I got you face. Today's video is sponsored by Vanity Planet Ultimate Skin Spa. It's a dual speed facial cleansing brush, which comes with three different repeating brush heads intended for daily usage occasional exfoliation and sensitive skin. As you guys know, my skincare routine is super basic. I usually just wash my face with water, a mild cleanser, and then moisturize afterwards. So I started adding this brush into my skincare routine and it's been working really well. So I decided to introduce it to my oldest daughters. Amaya and Akali are both approaching their teenage years and they're definitely gonna have to start taking more responsibility with taking better care of their skin. The variety of brush heads along with the dual speed allows me and my girls to customize our routine at any time. I really like using a cleansing brush over a face cloth to wash my face because the brush is really thick and soft yet still really gets a good clean. So if you're interested in getting a cleansing brush to spruce up your skincare routine or one for your soon-to-be teenagers, click on the link in the description to get your own ultimate skin spa kit and use the code MACY for that extra 70% discount. Okay, are you happy as now that you left Maryland? I'm not happiest. I'm not happiest. It's not exactly happy. It's more so just um, a shock. You know, there's, there's, it's like a culture shock. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I like it. Just saying, like, are you the, now? Are you like you move and like now? Are you like the happiest you've ever been? No, moving doesn't define your happiness. <laughs> so you're just as happy as before. It doesn't take away any problems. It doesn't add anything no it just it complicates things it's mm. just transitioning out of the maryland mindset into the california mindset yeah. so the answer is no how did we know that it was time to move across the country one thing that dictated that was our children like their schedules it was right in kind of like the summertime all of them were kind of in this transition period so we thought that it was a good idea to kind of move along and just try this out yeah, basically, we're just like, if we don't try something out now, it's not going to be a good time because Amaya's going to go to high school next year. And, like, for four years, we're not, we know we're not going to want to move. She's going to go to the same high school for all four years. So we're like, well, we better just, whatever we want to see and whatever we want to do, we better do it this year while she's just about to go into high school. While Kylie, she just transitioned out of her old school. She just finished up elementary school. We realized that this would be the only opportunity that we could actually try it in our lives and our kids life i was gonna say just in general like i didn't want to continue on with my life not knowing if i wanted to live somewhere else how long are we staying in california is it a permanent home or are we going to move again are we going to move back to maryland and do we have any regrets okay so we still have our house in maryland we didn't sell that house now we're going to so, sell it huh never going to sell it mm. hopefully maybe someday we don't ever want to sell that home so, okay. I mean, why we don't want to. Why are you? Everything that you're saying has nothing to do with what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I know it has nothing to do. Okay. It was just like a little financial, so, okay. so little financial. Wait, wait, a little financial tip. Ding, never sell your first home because it's the one that will make you the most money in the end. We haven't sold our home in Maryland, so that means right now we're renting in California. And the reason why we're renting in California, right by the beach is because we're trying it out. It's 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 a test, I guess. Yeah. Because we are renting, we're not grounded in yeah. California yet. Yeah. There's other factors that determine where we live, not just the location. Yeah. Um, I think California is a good location, but the prices is like double. Yeah. So. I mean, the area has a lot to do with it, but it's not like, I feel like I'm going to this area because it's, the only where place I can live my life. I feel like we have like a lot of different options that we could choose from to live in different like places. So, I mean, to be honest, I don't know why we, I don't know why we're here in Venice, but I do know it's something that we had to do mm -hmm. and something that we had to, uh, I guess, obey in mm -hmm. a sense. Yeah. And so like. Um, there's, there's a lot of things that's kind of up in the air that doesn't really make any sense to me or to Elena. But um, I'm glad that we are here because I feel like we're a lot more decisive about what we want and what we need. Mm. Well, you know, like we used to be kids, then you're a teenager, then like you're a young adult and you're like trying to figure out like 
what apartment am I going to get? Or am I going to move out of my parents' house and get, like, an apartment? How am I going to afford an apartment? Like, who am I going to be roommates with type of thing? And, like, those are, like, all the questions that are, like, surrounding your mind, you know? And, like, you don't really think necessarily, like, oh, right at this moment I need to make sure I'm in the place that I want to be. Because, like, you can do anything, you know? You can sign a lease for a year and then up and move, you know? So that's what I was doing for a really long time. I would just sign at least here, move, stay in Maryland. But so like now I feel like we have more of like a responsibility for our own lives to make sure that we're living exactly the way we want to live, you know, in different lifestyles, basically. A different place may represent a different lifestyle. And I don't think there's a right or a wrong one. It's just what me and him decide like works for both of us. And I feel like as an adult, like my own self, like I could easily go live in New York for three or four years and then move somewhere. Like, but since I have kids, I feel like I have, we have a responsibility to like stay somewhere. You know what I mean? Because to me, it doesn't really matter where you are. Where you are, it's just like who's around you. You know? And as long as like you and the kids are around me, like I don't really care. Okay, well, it's a couple of questions. How did we save to get to California? I said, is California expensive? Um, Is our financial situation what we expected since we moved to California? And what are our plans on to um, obtaining our own house? We just already had money saved up. I'm not really going to get into that because it's a very long spiel of how we save our money. And I was going to plan on doing that on my new channel called Elena Mays and just talk about our financial stuff on there. But... We but basically we just budgeted and saved our money. Is California expensive? I don't think California like the stuff around here is expensive. I feel like the housing is crazily expensive. Private schools are more expensive than I would like them to be. Can you guys imagine paying forty thousand dollars a year for a child to go to school? That's how much it costs for like a really great private school. I think that's like too much money. I think that I there's am- a lot more places to spend your money. There's like lots of like little eateries and cafes yeah. and like little places to like do your work and and just I don't know, I feel like yeah. especially where we live in Venice. I mean in Venice and in Koreatown. We're in Koreatown, there's always like somewhere for you to stop by and just like throw your change a little your bit. Five dollars, ten dollars here. Yeah, and then they have the machines now where, where like they flip the little mach- they flip the monitor on you so that you can add the tip on there. I know, not so, add no tip. We add a tip for what? We so constantly adding tips. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I've seen that in Maryland, like here and there, but over here it's like they have it in DC. Like nine, yeah. oh, okay, DC. Yeah, it's like ninety mm-hmm. percent. I know. The thing is, when you live around things, like everything's so accessible. Like we've been eating Uber Eats like crazy, just because like it's around here. Just like because the like the local food mart just has like hot food, we just go there. If we live like in our house and. We're in Maryland, like, we never do that because there's not anything around. So we're always, in the end, forced to make our own food yeah, at I mean, home Mc- or McDonald's, go to Walmart. McDonald's delivers, <laughs> um, like, every single store, like, a couple blocks away, like, they deliver or to walk there. Yeah. And so, like, it just gives you so much opportunity to throughout the money. day to spend money. Yeah, I hate that. I hate that. I don't like being around all this stuff, first of all. And it's not really the way I want to live as, like, in a lifestyle, like... I don't know, it's just not exactly what I want. It's not anything bad about it, it's just not what I want. I don't really like walking out of my house and like being around people. I wanna be alone. But this is like exactly why we moved here, because we moved to the area like we thought that was the most different. So we could say, do we even like it? Or do we not want to? And we're not committed to live here, so. Yeah, one of the reasons that we moved to Venice was because of the water and um, you know, there wouldn't be a whole lot of times in our life where we'd be able to live close to the water mm-hmm. with our children. Yeah. The kids love it. Yeah. The kids love it to so a point. much. To, yeah. To a point. But I don't. I don't. I don't like it. It has nothing to do with the water. It's just that I just feel like Venice is just too far away from anything that we ever want to go at. So I just don't like the... I don't like how far it is away from other things. And actually, I realized, like, I don't want to live in the city. I want to live out near nobody. I don't. I just don't want to live near people. Like, I'm, it's just, just showing me how much of an introvert I am. What about you? I don't mind it. The really? only The only thing I don't like is the lack of diversity in Venice um, oh, yeah. in terms of, like, racial diversity, at well, least see, where we are. they told us that. They said, why are you going to move to Venice? You know, there's no black people in Venice. And we was like, we don't care. If I want to get a chicken box at a half and half, even though I don't even know if they eat those in California, 
I can, there's nowhere I can go to get a chicken box and a half and half in the middle of the daytime. Not to say I'm even going to do that, but I would like the opportunity to possibly yeah. get a chicken box and a half and a half. If I want to go get beads for my daughter's hair and it's late at night and I have to have their hair ready for tomorrow because whatever reason, in the middle of the night, there's nowhere around to get beads or barrettes anywhere. There's no Walmart. I need to live near a Walmart. I realize why. And there's no Target. The closest Target to us is like 27 minutes, but we need to go to, like there are so many reasons. Okay, okay, here's a prime example. If I woke up at five o'clock in my house in Maryland and my child said to me, oh, Amaya, oh my, I forgot. Today is breakfast. We're having breakfast in a classroom. I need two dozen bagels and some orange juice. I can then get out of my car house, drive five to 10 minutes to Walmart, get those things and come back home in time for her to get to school or I can ride past that before we get to school. Here in Venice, there is no Walmart. There is no place that we can go super, super early in the morning and buy those things. But do you, do you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, instead of spending a yeah. dollar on a donut, you would spend four or five. It, it's just really, really nonsense. And now I realize why there's something called suburbia where you can jump in your car and go to Target in 10 minutes. Oh, oh, here's a perfect example. Here's the perfect example. He doesn't believe me. No, no, he doesn't believe me. I'm trying to convince Joe right now why we need to live there at Target. What happened? No, 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 no. no, no, no. A couple of days ago, I didn't, um, Joe drove the kids to school in the morning time. What happened? And you forgot what? Shoes. You forgot shoes. How long did it take you to get shoes for the kids? Once he he forgot them, so he's like thirty something minutes away from the house now, or forty something, know, like or an hour, hour away. Or, I don't know. It took me like an hour and a half. It took him an hour and a half to get them a pair of shoes from the store because number one, you're in the middle of the city. There was no Target nearby that sells like kids' shoes. There's no Walmart, and so like he was just like running around the whole town like trying to find the kids a pair of shoes. I can't live like my life like that. What's the best thing that we like about California, and what do we dislike about California? I like the California weather. I like how. It's never really, really ever humid. The sunsets are always really different every night um, and just really nice. I like the sound of the ocean out here. It sounds like an ocean. Like it's really like loud. Even though there is like this like very liberal type of um, mentality in California, I like how people are um, free to have their own opinions. Um, and that can, kind of, that can kind of get a little bit sketchy, but at the same time, I like how there are like lots of creatives, lots of entrepreneurs, um, lots of um, like alternative lifestyle people, people who are not afraid to try something different. I don't like the weather. I want, I, it's not that I don't like the weather. I want fall and I want snow and I want Christmas snow and I want the weather to change. I'm, I'm sick of seeing the sun. I'm sick of the sun, Joe. Weather plays a super important part in your life, you know? Sometimes I wake up and it's raining sometimes outside. You just want to have a bad day. <laughs> yeah. sometimes, I just... <laughs> sometimes I want to wake up and be rainy, so I have an excuse of why I don't need to do my schoolwork. But it's like, you know, you know when you wake up and it's rainy and you be like, oh, great, I don't have to go to school today. You be like, yeah, I'll just stay in and do my homework all day. I'll just, uh, just turn on the fire and stay and do my homework. And then, but you actually know in the back of your mind that you're going to do nothing except for sleep. And that's your excuse because it rained outside that day. <laughs> I don't think that deeply into it. I didn't know that it wasn't going to rain at all. I feel like I have to, like, you know, touch someone's like, hey, guess what? It's going to rain today. <laughs> like, someone's coming today. But it didn't rain. One of the things I realized while just moving here for two months is that I'm going to have to live somewhere where the, the seasons. When I'm coming up with these video ideas, I'm imagining in every single one of them the weather. I'm always super aware of what the season is and what the weather is. In our videos, if you look back, they're all... They're different for fall, summer, spring, winter. You know, we take advantage that we have that weather. It's just stories. We can tell stories with snow. You know what I mean? There's only so many stories you can tell with a bright sun shining. <laughs> Think about those times when we were driving in the car and it's raining and it's thunderstorming and you wake up and your electricity's out. Like, there's so many different stories you can tell with the impacts of weather and things like that. It's something that I love deeply and passionately love to show through the videos and I need 
to continue to do so that. So you didn't know this until moving out here? No, I didn't know it until moving out here. I didn't realize how much I didn't care about the weather. Dang, Joe! <laughs> <laughs> like, I can care less if it's raining, if it's sunny, if anything. But then I do realize that living out in California, it gives, it simplifies your wardrobe. Because you don't need to have any wet, uh, winter yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's true. People keep asking us about, about our car or something. We have our car here. I'm not sure if maybe you guys missed that video. Our car is here now. We shipped it over. One thing I do like about California is I've already met people here who like, are interested in the same things that I'm interested in. So that's cool. Now that we moved, what film projects might you be working or hoping to be a part of? Um, am I going to finish up school and is Joe going to pursue a career? Um, and also, what work opportunities have come through or s have we, we sought since arriving to person? California? No, these are all different questions. I'm saying them in different ways. Yeah, in terms of projects, um, I don't have anything lined up personally. Like, I have connections out here to talk to, or at least to start different things. I just haven't, like, tapped into them yet, to be honest. Like, I still feel like we're in, like, that transition period where we're trying to figure out our schedule, like nothing is really locked down, like our kids' schedules yeah. and um, even our schedules too. I don't feel like everyone's settled into place yet. I feel like it's gonna take like a longer time. Like it's gonna take like us a year to get settled. Like I think if you have no kids and you move somewhere, okay, you can get settled within a couple months. Like I still feel like we just, just moved here, which we did. In two months is not enough time for us to settle in, you know? Like, I got the kids into some activities and stuff like that, but, like, as far as our flow, we have to get that down first because if we don't have, like, family stuff together, right, how can we venture out and pursue other things? Before, when we were in Maryland, we had a very good system going for us. We had, like, our whole nanny situation set up, our cleaning situation, the kids' school, their schedules. It was, like, everything was down pat, and now that just stripped everything away from us. So like we only are putting like little tiny things in place and it's all basically impossible to do. First of all, it doesn't feel right to start something when we're still trying to get the family stuff right, you know? I mean, it's kinda, just hard to- We're kind of <clears throat> going into a different topic right now, but I think the most difficult thing for us to be out here is that we don't have the, the community and infrastructure that we have in Maryland like the people around us like let's say for like oh, we haven't built it yet we haven't built it yeah because it took a it's not like we just had it bro. yeah I, we and built it's more it difficult especially um where we live at too so even though there is the beach and you live by the beach or the water um you sacrifice a whole lot so right now what i'm having trouble with is finishing up my phd so so let's say i'm 70% finished what I need to do but the problem I'm having is that now that we moved because we don't have like a set schedule and things are just like really different from how they used to I can't really figure out how I'm actually supposed to get time to work on it like just my flow is like shattered we'll see how that goes but I really really need to be finished by the end of this year like I need to have everything written up by the end of this year in terms of like film and stuff what do you have an idea of what you want to work on or I like I like the types of things where what you're doing is borderline illegal <laughs> <laughs> I like to go out and um, I don't know like record things that are unfolding like right in front of me type of mm -hmm. things are the kids adjusting well in our new school in our new neighborhood they're fine the kids are fine um they're okay yeah yeah not anything super I mean, well because the older ones bad. are in homeschool i mean i think our older kids like it um, me, our sorry. younger kids our younger kids i think that i don't really think that they're adjusting well to be honest who Arizona and Ajdai. Because, like, Arizona has to be woken up super early. Yeah. Also Ajdai. And, um, and so, like, you know, they're just kind of cranky in the morning and they don't have a good, uh, they don't have a good start to the morning yeah. a lot of times. We have to get ourselves together, you guys. Why do we choose to homeschool only the little, big kids and not the little ones? We're not staying where we're at. So we're homeschooling because we yeah. didn't want to send the kids to a random school, have to pull them out and send them to another school. Does that make sense? I didn't want Amaya to go to one school for one year in eighth grade and then go to some other random school 
you know, it's like a little off year for them to explore the things they like to do and stuff like that. So I don't plan on homeschooling in the future. The main thing is, is that you're just doing a lot of I want to do, things. yeah, I have my own things that I want to no, I mean, pursue. I think your mentality now is going to be different after you finish your PhD. Yeah, after I finish my PhD, I'm definitely going to want them in school because I'm going to be working a job. I got job offers office lined up. I just need to find a high paying job. My goal for this, my goal, somebody asked is, is to at least find a job that pays at the bare minimum 150. More than that, really, I'd rather have 200. I don't want to go to work if I don't, if I don't make like a lot of money because it's not worth my time. I could be doing something else. I know how much I'm worth and I want to get a job where I can get bonuses. Why don't you pursue a job that you can give out the bonuses? Listen, that's what I was about to say. I was going to say what I would like to do is like have a consulting where I make my own money and where I can get my own bonuses. I mean, in the end, I mean, that's where I want to start, but that's not where I'm going to be in five years. Anyway, that's what I want to do, and I can't do that while homeschooling at the same time. Does Arizona stand more Korean now that she's going to her Korean school? And what about the older girls? Why did we decide to put the older girls in Korean school? One person said that, and another person said, especially when they're not Korean. Languages are not, don't discriminate between what your race is. So you can basically learn whatever language you want to at any time in your life, no matter what race you are. And it has nothing to do with it. You're learning Korean because everyone can go together and it costs $30. That's why. <laughs> like, they want to learn Korean. He speaks Korean. They watch Korean dramas. It's just something to learn because it's a skill to have. I want them to learn more than just Korean. Maya really like, wants to learn French. I, I want them all to learn at least three languages before they graduate high school. Is Arizona speaking or understanding more Korean now? I think she understands fluid Korean a lot better now. I don't think that necessarily she's um, really learning the language better exactly, um, or like certain vocabulary, but she understands like conversational lot better right? yeah like she can understand anything that anyone's saying to her now that she goes to the school where the children are speaking Korean like she tries to speak Korean more so she definitely Joe needs to work with her every day on her Korean but I can tell that if we keep doing this she's going to be very fluid in it the the special situation with Arizo is that I came into our relationships or into our blended family when she was like a year old baby. and then we had Ajay and so like it was already kind of decided at that point that the Korean language had to be infused to the family but like how can we introduce it to Ajay mm -hmm. without yeah. introducing it to Erzo right, when she was course. only a year old you know what I mean yeah when they're yeah. young so I love it that they're learning another language I don't care what language it was it is really I'm just, I just know that it's important for you to be bilingual, trilingual, really. The best thing about learning a different language is it makes your mind think differently than how you would, how everyone else around you would think. Yeah. Well, like when you were trying to mouth out, you couldn't figure out how to shape your tongue or your, your breath in a certain way to make it sound that way, you mm -hmm. know? I'm going to learn Korean. I mean, if I study it for 10 years, by the time my child is 11, I'll know it. How do the kids like homeschooling? They like it a lot. Yeah, the kids love homeschool. They don't even really consider it school. Yeah. But yes. the great thing is, is that you know they are keeping up with their assignments and things like that. So. Yeah, my sister created this really great system for them because she's so passionate about homeschooling her own children. So like, they upload assignments to some website and she checks them and she has like a great book. So my sister's doing a lot of it, setting up stuff for me right now. Like she has more resources than I do just because she's a teacher. What I want them to get out of homeschooling is another question for this year. Is I want them to have a better understanding of the world and the people in their community around them. That's what I want. So am I going to be going in theater and are the kids doing any acting and modeling? Amaya is going to be going into theater, like I said before. Like we just haven't, not there quite yet and to be able to arrange those things for them yet. How did you talk to the kids' dads about moving to California? Was there any resistance? I had to talk to two dads and no, there was not any resistance. Also, a question is, what's the setup like for the kids seeing their fathers? They see them fairly often. They're gonna be there for a while in October to spend some time and then we're gonna be back in like December for a very long time. So the question is, do we regret moving to California? The, answer, the first answer I get in my mind is like, 
I don't regret it, but I want to, like, I've been feeling really homesick, and I'm going to go back home. I'm ready for it to be over. I'm ready to move out of it. It's like, you guys were like, what? You guys just moved there. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to just move to a different part. I would I'm like ready, to experience I'm ready a different to be part. in a different place as well. Yeah. It's been, like, a month or two now, and we haven't figured out our schedule or, or mm-hmm. in, in these things, but we realized that our resources are not in this area. Yeah, so. it's just too hard. It's just too hard. Yeah. It's just too hard. Thanks for asking questions. We'll be back next week. We're probably going to go to a different schedule, you guys, because I really need to work my PhD, so we're probably going to be doing once a week. Sorry. That was a quick Times sorry. is hard. Times is hard. We got to... Lena got to get this work done. So I got to get this work done. You know, I'm saying, don't you want to see my graduation video? Me walking down a... Me throwing off my cap. I'm going to be like this. So like, no, I'm not gonna be. I would never disrespect the PhD like that. Can you get that mailed to you? <laughs> what? A PhD. No, Joe. Yes, it gets mailed to you. Thank you for watching. Continue to watch us next week. We're gonna have some different videos coming up. We're gonna have a date night in Korea now, 24 hours. All right, bye. 24 hours. Yes, 24 hours.